So you've invested in a Viqua VH410 F20 or Viqua VH200 F10, like this one here, ultraviolet disinfection system, a mini rack system to make the water at your home cottage or cabin safe for your family, good call. Now, a year later, it's time to do the maintenance. You've probably noticed that the timer here is counted down to, to zero or, or, or 10 or something like that. It's time to do the maintenance. Not sure how to do it, not sure what's involved. Well, I'm gonna show you how to do it the easy way right now. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is uh, you're gonna to wanna to shut off the water. So you'll have a shut off valve somewhere after the pressure tank, anywhere before the system. This is the inlet side here. So your unit may be reversed because one of the great features of this system is that it can be installed reverse. So whatever side the white filter is on is your inlet side. So you're gonna to need to shut off the water before that. So shut off the water, and then you're gonna go anywhere in the house, a laundry room or a bathroom or something like that, open up the faucet and release all the pressure. Let the water flow right down to a trickle. Once it's flowed down to a trickle, um, then if you have a shut off after on the uh, UV side of the system, you can shut that off. That'll keep the house water from draining back through the system and uh, causing a lot more water draining out of here than you really want. All right, so once you've completed that, then you would unplug the unit. It's usually easiest to unplug it here and you'll see why later on. All right, once you've got it unplugged, then, uh, then you need to um, uh, tackle the lamp. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this a little bit to make it a little bit easier for you to see. So we'll just turn this like this. All right, great. So. So this system has um, a clip uh, here, which has two sides to it. So what you do is you squeeze that in and then pull it up. You may have to wiggle it just a wee bit, not very much, just a wee bit. So as you're pulling it up, you can see the lamp here. So we're not gonna handle the lamp with our bare hands. We're gonna use a cloth or clean gloves. So then just grab the lamp and then you're gonna pull the electrical connector straight off it. Again, you can wiggle it just a little wee bit, pull it straight off. And then again, using your cloth or your clean gloves, you just pull the lamp out. All right, we'll set that aside. So now we want to remove the sleeve itself. So there's two nuts at either end, they're black. So what you need to do is you unscrew them so you can unscrew the top one. So these should be installed only hand tight. If they were installed hand tight the last time by whomever uh, put it in, or when it was originally installed, they'll, they'll unscrew hand tight. If they don't, you may have to use um, uh, pliers or something like that to, uh, to grab them and then screw them. And uh, so you'll see also at this end that there's a spring here. And uh, so what people always ask me, what does that spring do? And it's just a setup that when you put the lamp in, if for some reason that you let go of it, it would, it would go flying right through the other end and you'd likely break it. So the spring just kind of cushions the fall if that were to happen. All right, so then grab the sleeve at the ends and then just kind of slide a little bit up and down and you'll feel the O-rings come loose. So again, you pull out the sleeve, and again, you would only, you can handle the ends with your bare hands, but the middle part you'll have to only handle with a cloth. So typically, you need to check and see how clean the sleeve is. And this is a very important part, and a part that a lot of folks miss, is the sleeve has to come out every time you do maintenance on this system. So now you can clean that sleeve. So what do you use? You can use a, a, a CLR, um, vinegar, products like that to clean the sleeve. So make sure when you're cleaning the sleeve, the sleeve has to be 100% clean. It has to look just like brand new, just like this one here. If you can't get it clean, you have to replace that sleeve because if the sleeve has deposits on it or it has a haze on it or iron or something like that, the light isn't strong enough to shine through that to kill the bacteria. In other words, like drawing a curtain across that light and the money that you invested in an ultraviolet uh, replacement lamp, actually in the whole system, is wasted. So once you've cleaned the sleeve, then you would slide it back in. So again, you can handle it by the very ends. Be very careful. The sleeve is very, very fragile. And if you break the sleeve, the system isn't gonna work until you get a new one. And, uh, and you may not even, if you don't have a bypass built around your UV system, then you won't even have water in your home cottage or cabin until that's been repaired. All right, so once you've got the sleeve in there and you've got the O-rings on both ends, you should wet the O-rings. I always suggest using Plumber's Clear silicone grease but at least wet them with water. And then the gland nut will go 
The one with the spring goes on the bottom. And again, you're only going to make that hand tight. And then the, the one, whoops, without the spring is going to go on the top. And again, hand tight. So I tighten them both together at the same time. All right. So then what we're going to do is we're going to grab our new lamp. Now you'll see the end is keyed. So it has uh, four pins on it and uh, they're one, two, three different lengths. So, so there's only one way that this uh, can go into here, can go into the, the end of the electrical connection here. Okay, so what you can do is you can hold the lamp, something like this, and then just make sure you, you line up the, the longest pin with the correct connection. All right, and then you're going to slide this down onto here. Now, one thing I should mention, this is a safety lock here. So if, if you have it at this stage and you say, oh, I'm going to check it to see if it works and you plug it in and it doesn't work, don't be surprised because it has to be clipped right into the safety lock before the lamp will work. And by the way, and you don't want to illuminate the lamp and stare at it with your, um, with a, with your eyesight or like with your eyes because it would actually, the UV light will actually damage your eyes. So don't do that. So slide it down, but you have to slide it right down until it clicks. I don't know if you heard that or not, but it needs to click in place. Okay, great. So we've got that part of it done. So now what we need to do is we need to tackle the filter part of it. So with your system, it would have come with a wrench, something like this, to remove. And uh, so, <laughs> Gary, lefty loosey, righty tighty. So you slide this on here and unscrew that. So there's also a pressure release button up at the top here. So it's a good idea to press that before to release the pressure. You have to release all the pressure before you can unscrew this. If you have trouble getting it off, double check to make sure you've released all the pressure in the system. So then, so then what you would do is you would just unscrew this. So yours of course would be firmly mounted on the wall, or of course mine isn't here, it's just on this rack. So once you've unscrewed that, this collar will drop off. There it is. All right. So, the, so like I say, the, the collar will drop off. Now, one thing I'd like you to make aware of is that this does have a drain port at the bottom. So maybe not so much with this, uh, with this 10 inch filter, but the VH410 with the 20 inch filter, this is going to be super heavy, especially when it's full of water. So it's not a bad idea to unscrew that drain port at the bottom, drain all the water out, make it much easier to handle. Just make sure you remember to put the drain port back in. All right, so then once you've replaced the filter, then again, I would suggest using Plumber's Clear silicone grease on this O-ring. And then we fit this back inside here, slide this back up into the unit, like so. And we could slide that. So one of the neat things that Dequa does is uh, they put right on here which which model number of filter you need when it comes time to make the replacement. So it's always a good idea to position that toward the front. And again, if you're looking for uh, lamps and and uh, when it comes like like now, for example, when it's time to replace the lamp and the sleeve. Um, we have them on our website. I'll click up here for our bundles. We actually sell them in bundles. It'll save you some money buying it that way. Um, if you're not sure what your model number you have, it's written here, by the way. So, all right. So once you get to this stage, now often they say that this filter housing should be only hand tight. Well, when you get to a certain age, I'm not sure hand tight is tight enough. So what I do is I just tighten it just a little bit more using the wrench just to make sure it doesn't leak. And uh, all right, great. So now what you've done, you've... Uh, Change the filter, you've changed the lamp, you've cleaned the sleeve, you're in great shape. Now what you need to do is reset the timer. So again, what you probably noticed is when this unit was first installed, it was displaying 365 here, and then it counted down the days, counted down the days, and uh, it started beeping to remind you it's time to replace the, the lamp, etc. So if it gets down below zero, it goes to A3, and that just tells you that it's over time. So it's not a... It's not a troubleshooting thing or it's not a warning or an error message. It just tells you that you've gone over. Okay, so now what you need to do is on the side here, there's a little reset button. So you're going to push in that reset button, but you're going to hold it in. Then you're going to take the power cord and you're going to plug it in. And once you plug it in, 
It'll pause for, I don't know, four or five seconds, and then you'll see the word reset show up on the screen here. I always wait till I see the word reset and I count to five. After I count to five, I let go of the button, there's a short pause, and then it'll go to 365. And that tells you that the unit has been reset. So now you're ready to turn the water on. So what you would do is uh, you would go to that shutoff that you use on the water line coming into the unit. You would open it only partially because you don't want to open it full blast. So you've got a full blast of water going through here in case you have any leaks. So you just open it partially, let the unit fill up and check for leaks. If you don't have any leaks, then you can open it up fully. Then you can go to a faucet anywhere downstream of this and open it up and you'll see bursts of air coming out. Let the water run until it it runs without any of those bursts of air. Let the water run to a, a, a smooth stream. So one point I'd like to mention at this point is if this, this system has been shut down for whatever reason, or if the UV lamp was in here a lot longer than those 365 days, then you're gonna to need to disinfect the plumbing in your home cottage or cabin, just to make sure that there is no bacteria there so that your unit can func function properly. I have a great uh, YouTube video that shows you how to do that. I'll put it in the cards up above and uh, a link in the description down below. To learn more about ultraviolet disinfection, click over here for my next video and I'll see you there.